National finals are part of the very fabric of Eurovision these days, with the likes of Melody Festival and Festivali Congus and many more becoming must-see events for Eurovision fans. And of course, that's not even mentioning the iconic San Remo Festival, Italy's celebration of song, a festival that in many ways actually inspired Eurovision itself. And whilst it sort of is a national final, but also sort of isn't these days, in 1956, Eurovision and San Remo met in a very special way. My name is Chris, and this is the story of the very first Eurovision national final. With the Eurovision Song Contest being announced back in 1955, one of the tasks faced in the participating countries was how they'd select their songs and their artists. Initially, there was a suggestion that every country would actually host a national selection to choose their two songs for the final. Yes, in case you didn't know, Eurovision 1956 had every country being represented twice. With only seven countries, it would be a pretty short show otherwise. In the end, only four countries would actually host a national selection, those being Germany, Switzerland, the Netherlands, and, for our interest, Italy. Now, of course, Italy already had a ready-made selection festival to do that with, so it was no surprise when they announced that they would choose their two songs through the 1956 Festival di San Remo. By the way, I majorly apologise if I butcher any Italian pronunciation in this, that is something that I cannot do. Now, as I mentioned before, San Romo did in many ways inspire Eurovision. It was first held in 1951, and over the years it hosted many well-known Italian artists and songwriters. In 1955, the contest was actually broadcast on TV for the first time. In fact, it was even aired outside of Italy to many other European countries. That was part of the reason why Eurovision itself seemed like a feasible option, because San Romo had done it earlier. In 1955, the winner was Claudio Villa, the first of his four San Romo victories, a record to this day. So roll on 1956, and with the added pressure of having to select Italy's first two artists for Eurovision, things were a little different. You see, the organisers of San Remo were slightly concerned that their song contest was being overshadowed by the people singing them. So for 1956, they decided to only allow newcomer acts to take part. Now, of course, in the present day, there is a current newcomer competition, and some of those artists go on to make a real name in the actual San Remo Festival itself. Somebody like Francesco Gabbani, who won the 2016 newcomers, then won San Remo itself a year later with Occidentali's Karma. The difference is, of course, that the newcomer section these days is just part of the festival. In 1956, it was the festival. In a way, it's rational thinking. If an artist doesn't have an existing fan base, there's no way they can influence the voting. It's a decision that, in many ways, inspires the BBC to this day. The six newcomers were Luciana Gonzalez, Gianni Marzocchi, Ugo Molinari, Franco Raimondi, Tonina Torrielli, and Clara Vincenzi. They were selected from a previous competition that broadcaster RAI had held to find a group of new voices. The format was pretty simple. Each of those artists would be assigned a number of songs, some of them as a duet, which would take part in two semi-finals of ten songs each. Five songs would qualify from each night, and then you would have a ten-song grand final. From that grand final, one would be declared the winner, and the top two were going to go straight to Eurovision. And so on March 8th, 1956, the San Remo Festival opened its first semi-final. And it would be the otherwise unknown Clara Vincenzi who would, unknowingly at the time, go on to make Eurovision history. This is her entry, Louis E. Lay, the first ever song in a Eurovision national selection. Well, sort of. You see, Louis E. Lay didn't actually qualify for the final of San Remo, a sort of anti-climax for the first ever national selection song. And as a result of its failure to qualify and Clara being a relative unknown, her version of the song seems to have been lost to time. That version you just heard is often credited to an Italian singer called Nella Colombo. In fact, many of the versions that are uploaded in Clara's name appear to be the Nella version. In fact, that seems to be the fate for many of the songs from San Romo this year, with some of the recordings at the time only containing a handful of the songs. The reason for that is that, unfortunately, not only were the artists not really rated, the songs weren't either. 
One critic called the songs mediocre and that they didn't exceed the level of common craftsmanship, a phrase that I really should take into some of the reviews that I'm doing. The fact was, even the organisers of San Remo seemed to recognise that they had a problem. Having barred some of the big names from taking part, they were then invited to a fourth night of the festival in a non-competition format, simply to showcase their songs. In the actual competition, Franca Raimondi would go on to win with her song A Pretty Le Finestri. Aprite le finestre al nuovo sole, è primavera, è primavera. Franca would just win the contest by eight points over Torino Torielli's Amami Se Vuoi. Amami Se Vuoi, ti ami mi se vuoi, io so l'amor che svanisce. Of course, both of those songs would go on to Eurovision itself in Lugano. And as many of you will know, we don't know what happened to them in the grand results. Only the winner was announced and no other results were ever confirmed. It will be no surprise after what I've been saying that San Remo's 1956 experiment with newcomer artists did not last. A year later, the established names like Claudio Villa, Domenico Modugno and Nila Pizzi were all back with one exception. Whilst five of the 1956 artists never returned to San Remo and never really made an impact in the Italian music scene, Tonina Torielli did have a brief period of success. In fact, Tonina would go on to finish third at San Remo in 1957 and second once again in 1958. She would actually be a fixture at San Remo every year until 1963, but in 1965 she ultimately chose to retire from the music industry. San Remo, of course, would go on to be held every single year since then, continuing to either act as Italy's selection process or simply as its own celebration. And whilst the 1956 edition might not have been perfect, it was in many ways the perfect first national final for Eurovision. San Remo and Eurovision's histories are intertwined, and whilst they may have come apart Part, it's definitely something that many Eurovision fans look forward to every year. At the time of recording this, we haven't heard the songs of the 2021 festival, but more than anything else, let's just hope for one thing, that they exceed the level of common craftsmanship. Thank you very much for watching my look back at the first ever national final. It was a lot of fun putting the research together for this. I spent a lot of time Google translating some old Italian news articles to try and work out the process of this festival. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, let me know whether you'd like to find out a little bit more Eurovision history for some of the other national finals in 1956 or some other historic classical ones that we can look back at. If you did enjoy the video, please do leave a like, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below. Have you heard some of the other entries from 1956's San Remo? Let me know what your favourite was down in the comment section as well. That's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you later. Bye!